And you know, our objective here is to share useful information for house cleaning businesses to put to work to you know, take care of their clients, to make sure they're taking care of their employees and to create more value really for all stakeholders. Today, we're going to try to give you some high level information that we think is gonna be actionable, something you can uh, take away from this to uh, put in uh, work in your businesses as soon as tomorrow, hopefully. Um, there's gonna be some details I'm gonna be skimming over, but in subsequent days, we'll get into more detail in terms of uh, some of the whys behind what it is I'm sharing here and some, some of the details. We're going to get into uh, the circle of infection and how we break that. and we're going to share with you a cleaning protocol for infection control that you can use in homes. We're talking about, you know, we're going to clean surfaces and make your home safer and reduce the chance of, of getting infection in your home. But how do I really do that? Well, we're going to give you a protocol that that, that we use that uh, you're, you're free to take. And uh, hopefully, you know, you might, you know, have your own. But if not, uh, this is something that, that, that you can train to and start using as soon as tomorrow. I um, want to remind everybody that, uh, you know, there's a lot of fear out there and there's a lot of, you know, people, you know, afraid for, for a whole lot of reasons, but, you know, we're really in a unique position as, as house cleaning businesses and there's a wealth of opportunity for us if we can just, you know, catch our breath and be thinking about, you know, how we can play a, a, a positive role and create value during this, uh, time of, uh, you know, I guess it's really getting to the point where we could say crisis. Uh, the World Health Organization says we have a pandemic now. And if you're watching the stock markets and people buying toilet paper at Costco, it's obvious that things are uh, really starting to escalate. And quite frankly, it's going to get worse over, over the days ahead. You know, probably, you know, it'll, you know, there'll be more people getting sick, you know, every day. If for no other reason, they've got tests out there now and they're testing more people. So, you know, these are all of the opportunities. We talked about that yesterday. Uh, we also talked about we need a smart business plan. Let me flip this around. There you go. We need... Um, uh, to make smart business moves. And we talked about how important it is to have a communication plan. On the uh, resource page on Cleaning Business Today, we've got some examples of those. We're gonna be adding more uh, examples as, as the days go on. Uh, but today, I wanna kind of jump into our initial action plan and talk about an infection control protocol that we can use for, for, for cleaning homes. And here's a thought though that I want us uh, all to uh, give serious consideration to. This is information that I think that you would wanna share with your, your, your cleaning technicians, uh, might wanna share it with your clients and, and uh, the, the community as a whole. That professional house cleaners delivering hygienic cleaning are the front line of defense against infectious diseases. Uh, that's a statement that, you know, I guess really uh, Michael, very, uh, this is a really cool book. Um, I'll explain a little bit later, but it's in the, in, in, in the resource page in Cleaning Business Today. Uh, coined, that's a paraphrase from that, that the Bitcoin many years ago, that, um, you know, we as cleaning professionals truly are on the front line when it comes to fighting infectious diseases. And, you know, this has been true for years and consumers for years probably didn't care a heck of a lot about that. They wanted their home to look clean and get it done as cheaply as possible. Um, I'm predicting that right now, this is kind of like a 9-11 moment. You remember before 9-11 that uh, how easy it was to get on an airplane and go somewhere and just how we thought about safety in a lot of different ways. After 9-11, uh, getting on an airplane certainly has been different. And even 20 years later, almost 20 years later, it's still quite a different experience. And I'm thinking when the dust settles on coronavirus thing that uh, consumers are going to be thinking differently about house cleaning and be thinking more about you know the hygienic part of it and how proper house cleaning can keep their families safe. And I think that's going to create a tremendous opportunity for those of us running professional house cleaning companies. So 
take that thought and uh, and hold on to it. Chain of infection. Okay, this is uh, a somatic. Uh, I mean, it's, it's been around. It's uh, from IFH. Uh, we got an example of it in the HPT manual, which is also in in in, in the resource kit. But basically, germs have to start with a with a spore. And depending on the pathogen, the source might be a mosquito, it might be a raw piece of chicken. Uh, as it pertains to the coronavirus, it's people. Basically, people get the coronavirus, they're the source, they're the host, and the germs are basically, the, the viruses are growing in their throat and their nose, and it exits from their body primarily through a sneeze or a cough. Now, at that point, if people are practicing you know, good infection control practices, they're sneezing or coughing into a tissue or into uh, the inside of their elbow. But too many times people just sneeze or cough uh, on, a, on, a, on a surface or they more, you know, on their hands and then they take their hand that now has uh, the pathogen on it. And they're touching a table, they're touching a doorknob, they're touching the handle of a coffee pot. And that's, the method of spread that I'm talking about. The method of spread is somebody sneezes and they either, it's either their hand or on a surface, they're depositing the pathogen there. Now you got a germ, say, on a table. How does it uh, enter a healthy body? Usually through dirty hands. Somebody touches something. I mean, you, it could be just like a direct sneeze where, you know, a sick person sneezes on a healthy person, but more times than not, we believe it's somebody's touching a surface that has the pathogen on it. They get it on their hands and they touch their face. We're human beings. It's just you can't go through a day without touching your face. And, you know, you either, you know, pick up a, a cookie that you get the pathogen on your finger and pop the cookie in your mouth. And the cookie now has the pathogen on it. And you're eating it or you scratch your eye or, you know, it's basically going in through your, your mouth, your nose, or your eye, and we're doing that all day long. Susceptible persons have to have that uh, pathogen going into their body. In the case of the coronavirus, everybody's susceptible. Um, some people, or a lot of people actually are asymptomatic, that they don't get very sick, or in some cases not sick at all, but if uh, they, they, the elderly or people with other health issues such as maybe diabetes, maybe uh, suppressed immune systems, say chemo patients, things like that, uh, people with uh, breathing issues, COPD, they're at high risk. And if they have that pathogen introduced to their body and if they develop coronavirus, uh, you know, a lot of cases, the mortality rate is higher with them. So as cleaning businesses, we have an opportunity, we have a responsibility to make sure that all of our people and basically everybody that we're communicating with, we want to educate the community on how to make sure that they know how to wash their hands and wash their hands properly. We want to make sure that everybody is you know, sneezing and coughing in a responsible way. We also down here on the method of spread, we want to be cleaning high touch surfaces in people's homes in a way to remove uh, enough uh, organic matter and potentially pathogens like uh, the ones that cause coronavirus from that surface. So if somebody touches it, they're not going to get it on their hands and then wind up, you know, eating a sandwich and making themselves sick. This is really where we have an opportunity to create a ton of value. And I'm sharing this with you because the people that are cleaning for you, if they understand this, they have a purpose behind what they're doing now and they understand the why behind what they're doing it. Everybody does a better job if they understand the why. And for those of us, and it's a rational thing to be afraid that we're going to be losing customers because they're going to be afraid of having people in their homes, we can help our customers understand and our prospective customers understand this and how we help them uh, keep their family safe because we are cleaning high touch areas and keeping their homes safe. Then you know, we're creating more value in their minds and they're more likely to use our service. Um, I want to take a minute and talk about personal protective equipment before we, we, we skip to the next slide, though. It's important that you're, you're keeping your people safe. So they need to understand, you know, how we get sick and how we prevent ourselves from getting sick and how we wash our hands and how to use hand sanitizer. Um, 
we believe it's important during this uncertain time to have a protocol where you've got your your uh, cleaning technicians while they're on a job wearing gloves for the for the entire job. They can be vinyl, they can be nitro, just something to protect their hands, and they can take those gloves off uh, at the end of the job and put on new gloves at the, at the, at the beginning of the next job. Um, it's important that we take those gloves off in the proper way, so we aren't actually getting any any organic matter, any pathogens that have been collected on the gloves or our fingers as we're taking them off. Uh, there's some good videos for that. I need to uh, put one of those on the resource page. It's not there, but I, but, but I will. Um, eye protection is something that's a good idea under any circumstances, especially if you're doing you know wet work, cleaning toilets, things like that. Um, not necessarily the entire house, but uh, you know, it's it's just something as we're we're into this heightened state of awareness to uh, to think about incorporating into to some of your cleaning procedures. Shoe covers are something that you can consider implementing. Uh, we we've done that at Castle Keepers. Quite honestly, I'm sure I'm not sure what the true efficacy of that is in terms of infection control. Maybe some, um, but you know, there's, we're dealing with two things here. We're we're dealing with truly trying to reduce the number of pathogens in somebody's home, but at the same time, there's a lot of emotion going on. A lot of people are scared. And people are looking for visible signs that we are aware and mindful in doing things to protect them. And shoe covers is something tangible that people can see. It might be different. That would give them some level of comfort. So you want to keep them safe from a, a biological standpoint. But anything you can do to give them some comfort from an emotional, psychological standpoint, that counts a lot, too. Hand sanitizer. You need uh, plenty of hand sanitizer. It's... Uh, in short supply right now, but um, you know if you can if you can find it, uh, please provide it to your people. I want to take just a minute, and this is this is good information to share with your cleaning technicians as as well. The difference between cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting. Cleaning is what we do every day in a home. That's what we do. We 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 clean homes, and you are basically just uh, removing soil and disposing of it in a responsible way. It's kind of a simple definition of that. Sanitizing. We're basically uh, reducing microorganisms, removing organic matter down to a level where it's considered to be safe for humans. So, so reducing it to a level where if somebody touched that surface, it wouldn't make them sick. We're not killing all of the germs, but we're, we're making it safe to a level where somebody shouldn't be sick. Disinfecting is we're killing a, a much higher uh, quantity of germs. This says 99.9%. Um, depending upon you know whose definition and what you're doing, if you're getting an, uh, a disinfectant uh, registered with the EPA, I think you have to take it down two more logs than that. But suffice it to say that disinfecting is a much higher kill rate. Um, in a perfect world, we would be disinfecting everything in, in, you know, that we could, I guess, but it's a lot more work to disinfect and not only work, but, but a lot more time. In a lot of cases, it's not practical to disinfect. And let me explain. When we're using a disinfectant, and this is just a disinfectant, I think this is a Buckeye product. Any disinfectant you have, you need to read the label. And most disinfectants of this nature will tell you, you take a uh, your, your general purpose cleaner and you clean the surface first, you generously apply your, your disinfectant onto the surface that you're disinfecting, you need let it dwell for 10 minutes. And that means it just sits there for 20, 10 minutes, but it has to stay wet for 10 minutes. And at the end of 10 minutes, uh, in some cases, it'll tell you just to let it air dry. In other cases, it'll tell you to, you know, take another towel and, 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 and wipe it clean. But the fact of the matter is most people don't clean that way. They use disinfectants, but they're spray, spraying and wiping with it. Um, not necessarily the worst thing in the world, but you aren't disinfecting when you use it that way. Um, sanitizing, on the other hand, you can use a disinfectant and spray and wipe and maybe just leave it. I mean, you've got a lot more runway, I guess, a lot more options to kill germs at a sanitation level with a disinfectant, and you're still killing enough germs to, to make people safe. 
I'll give you another example. Uh, here's a product, uh, I think they picked it up at Costco. Um, let's say uh, disinfectant wipe. It says it kills 99.9% .9 viruses and bacteria. It kind of matches this definition here. If you read the instructions, it says if you want to disinfect a surface, you have to keep it moist, in this case, for four minutes. Um, if you ever used one of these things before and you wipe the surface with it, it's going to dry before four minutes. So um, I guess really you're not supposed to take a dirty towel and wipe a surface with it more than once. So theoretically, you would need to get another towel out of it and keep wiping it and keeping it wet for four minutes. Not many people are going to do that. But it also says if you want to sanitize the surface, you can wipe it and keep it wet for just 10 seconds. Now that's doable on a lot more surfaces. So what we have done is we've put together a cleaning uh, protocol for, for house cleaning for surfaces that we can practically disinfect. We're recommending disinfecting it. And that would be things like flat countertop things that you could actually clean and then come back and, and spray a, a product like this and keep it, keep it wet for, for, for 10 minutes. But for a lot of high touch surfaces, such as uh, light switches, such as doorknobs, such as handles on numerous things, if you really start looking around your house at all of the handles you have on cabinets and drawers, appliances, there are a ton of handles and homes. Um, we're going to recommend sanitizing those. And what I want to show you is do, do, do cleaning business today again. Um, if you go to our resources page, which is forward slash corona dash coronavirus dash downloads, um, we've got a few more things here that we've added. One of them is an infection control protocol. And what we're suggesting here, see if I can blow this up just a little bit, is um, we want to sanitize surfaces like doorknobs, cabinet knobs, handles, light switches, stair rails. And this is a working document, by the way. We're going to be building on this and, and expanding them on it. But basically what we're saying is we need to make sure that we read the label and know what's on our disinfectant. We want to have two microfiber claws. We're, par we're partial to a product called Perfect Clean. It's uh, from, a, from an infection control standpoint, it's a really good wiper, but there's others out there in the market as well. Um, whatever method you use with a general purpose cleaner, clean the surface with your general purpose cleaner, you want to then come back and with your second cloth, spray it with your disinfectant cleaner and, and apply that. Uh, to say the door handle and uh, let it air dry. Some disinfectants say that they want you to, to wipe it clean, others don't. Um, but that would be a methodology you could use on all these weird shaped things that you really can't keep wet for 10 minutes, you know, uh, the way you could a, a, a countertop to, to get uh, at least a sanitation level uh, kill rate. And by definition, you're making people safe. For bigger surfaces, let me see if I can, I guess I gotta reduce that a little bit to get to the bottom. I can make it bigger again. Um, countertop, sink, toilet, you can actually disinfect those. And you just follow the instructions that are on the bottle. Typically, you use your general purpose cleaner to clean it. You spray this product on, let it dwell 10 minutes, and you may or may not wipe it clean after that. So, yeah, we went a little bit long today. I'm sorry. I wanted to jam a lot of stuff in here because daylight's burning. This virus is going to start picking up and we're going to be hearing larger and larger numbers. We need to be responsive. This is information that you can use to keep your people safe and to give comfort to your clients that you're doing more than just making their home look good. You're actually reducing the chance that they're going to catch some disease in their home. Um, this resource page has a lot of useful information to you. 
please be communicating with all your stakeholders, be sharing information with your employees, share the information you're learning here, share it with your clients. Because what you want to do is you want to be bringing this to their attention and making them comfortable that you're being responsible and looking out after them. They'll feel a whole lot better than if they're the ones having to take the initiative to pick the phone up and call you and say, hey, I'm worried about you guys making me sick. I know that makes sense if you think about it. So use some of these letters here to uh, start your communication process with, with, with all your stakeholders. Appreciate you hanging in there with me today. Um, again, I went a bit long, sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll do better tomorrow, um, but we'll be picking up on this theme and we'll uh, see you tomorrow at uh, five o'clock Eastern. Thanks.